may be seated. What have you asked of Jesus lately? What have you asked of Jesus lately? Please come with me in prayer. God, help your vessel to deliver the message you have placed upon the heart. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. What have you asked of Jesus lately? Mom. This, is, this, this message is good because it stepped on the toes of your pastor. So I'm going to let you turn it off or whatever. What have you asked of Jesus lately? Mom, please. Husband, will you? Wife, will you? Partner, will you? In this gospel according to Mark, it has the brothers of James and John asking Jesus to grant them privilege. Now, because I was doing a little studying, in the gospel according to Matthew, it has the mother asking Jesus for privilege. What privilege, you may ask? For her sons to sit at God's right hand and the other in the kingdom in which Jesus was coming into. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke, let me just teach right now a little bit. Those are called the synoptic gospels because it sums up the life of Jesus' ministry, birth. But back to our text, the gospel according to Mark 10, 35 through 45, the disciples asked out of selfishness to sit at the right hand or the left hand of God. They were asking Jesus to give them an edge. So when you read this text, why couldn't or Jesus grant the request of the brothers or the mother? But we're, gonna, we're going to be with the brothers since that's the gospel of Mark we're dealing with. It wasn't that Jesus couldn't grant. But listen. The text says that that privilege, that right, would be given to those from whom they have been prepared. And Jesus went on to say, but that's not for me to give. That's for the creator. That's for God. Well, we know that God and the creator are one. However, Jesus was teaching. When we go to Jesus asking for things in prayer, they must be for non-selfish reasons. Jesus was teaching them that you must be non-selfish workers. Stop worrying about who's going to get accolades. Stop worrying about who's going to sit on the right hand of the Creator. I am the Son. I came down to save your life. I'm paraphrasing now. And you're worrying about who's going to sit on the right or the left hand of God? That's not for me to give. And then in studying this text, the question can be asked, well, why were the other disciples angry at James and John? And I want to put back into your memory that John was the disciple. If you don't believe what I'm saying, go to the gospel according to John. It says, John says about himself, I'm the one who Jesus loved so. So if Jesus loved him 
So, why couldn't that be granted? The other disciples were angry. And in studying that and reflecting upon that, I thought about, well, were they jealous? Were they jealous that Jesus would or, or could possibly give them the upper hand in the kingdom? Again, what lesson was Jesus teaching in saying, the first will be last? Jesus again was saying, don't worry about the accolades, but be concerned with being a servant like I am. I was praying that you would get that. Who was called the great I am? Say it out loudly, don't be afraid. Who was called the great I am? God. And if not if, since God came down in the form of humanity, God. To be a servant, why shouldn't you? That's the lesson Jesus was teaching. Don't worry about being great. Now, James and John weren't about being great, but they were the same disciples that ran away when God was being, God as Jesus, Jesus as God, was being held on trial, was being whipped, was being stripped, and these are the same disciples who said, can I be on your left? Can I be on your right? And the other ones, I'm believing, they were just angry, not because they asked Jesus, but that they didn't ask first. Don't worry about being great. The disciples had to learn that ministry being a servant of God, like we all are, are supposed to be, must mean doing and not being worried about being honored. If honor occurs through that of God, fine. Then you have to not worry about all your stuff. Sometimes I become so overwhelmed and, and I say, God, take care of Durham, North Carolina. But then in doing this research for this lesson, for this sermon, it came to me, what have I asked of Jesus lately? And although 1 John chapter 5 and 14 says, this is the confidence in approaching God, in approaching God, that if we ask anything, and this is what gets me. If we ask anything according to God's will, God hears us. We know that we have what we ask for. So we don't have to worry God. God knows our hearts. The Bible says God will give us the desires of our hearts. The disciples had to learn that ministry, being a servant, is important. We have to learn that being a servant is so significant. So our prayer must be, like Jesus said, he had come to serve and not be served. He had come not to ask God for selfish things. And I don't believe this is selfish. This is not in the sermon, but this was human. When Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane to remove this cup from me, he didn't want to go through the pain and hurt. It didn't say that he didn't want to save us, but he didn't want to go through the pain and hurt. But when he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So, what will we ask of Jesus in the days to come? This is what you're supposed to learn from this text. Because the disciples didn't ask correctly from Jesus. Yes, we have our needs. Yes, we have our wants. Yes, 
We want God to bless our families. I ask God right there with my little ones to protect. I still ask God to take care of North Carolina, to take care in Lenox. But the ultimate prayer, the ultimate asking of God for you and for me, God, please help me to be a better person. God, please help me not to keep up so much confusion. God, please help me to be a better Christian. God, please help me to be a better partner. God, please help me to be a better wife and a better husband. God, please, you, Jesus, help me to be more like you. Help me to trust that you will handle all placements and all accolades accordingly as you and the Creator see fit. I just need the Holy Spirit to help me be obedient. Are we willing to drink of the same cup as Jesus did? He was ostracized. He was persecuted. However, he still washed the feet of his disciples. Were we willing to be baptized in what Jesus was baptized in? I keep telling people that's just an outer, that baptistry is just an outer demonstration of what has happened within and what we are supposed to do as followers of Christ. That doesn't save you. Believing upon the Christ saves you. But when you believe upon the Christ, that helps you, enables you to do ministry on behalf of Christ, not worrying about accolades. And finally, when... Jesus said, for the Son of Man, and that's just a term, because Jesus came down through that of humanity, and he was a friend to us all, came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. I bet you some of you would give your lives for your partners, for your spouses, for your children, for your grandchildren. And maybe on some days, you'll say, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'm going to give my life for them. But in that of service, Jesus kept saying, I'm here to serve. I'm God. And I'm not worrying about who's going to sit on the right or left. And furthermore, that's only for God. But he's really saying, you know, that's for us to decide. You just do the work. You just be a part of the ministry. You just be obedient. You just do my will. Don't worry about people patting you on your back. Yes, we want accolades sometimes. It feels good. But if you don't get it, don't stop working. Not in this church, but I have heard of people in other churches. They didn't call my name. And I worked my fingers off. I'm not doing it anymore. Well, why were you doing it, James and John? Did you want to sit on the right or left side? You do it because you have been called to do it by that of the highest servant of them all, that of Jesus. What have you asked of Jesus lately? It should be, give me strength to keep doing the work. Give me strength when I am hurt. Give me strength when I feel like there's no one on my side. Give me strength. What have you, from the pulpit to the pew, asked of Jesus lately. Amen. That's